you know, I was even a doubting Thomas. So what I did, you know, what brake fluid does to, to plastic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I took brake fluid. I dumped it on the windshield. I turned it so that, you know, it was curved up, dumped it on the windshield. I was at a rally and I dumped it on the windshield and put it behind the trailer and I forgot. Mm-hmm. And two days later, the rally's coming to an end. I walk around back. I thought, oh no, there's that windshield. It's going to be toast. Well, guess what? I poured the brake fluid off of it and it was just as pristine as when I put it on. Oh yeah, once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Get hooked up now. If you're looking for a badass aftermarket windshield uh, for your Hardy Davidson, for your Indian, for your Honda Goldwing, and everything in between, you have got to listen to this episode. Hey, Bikeaholic, Cero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Hardy Davidson and a brand new line for the all new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. Top quality, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99%. That's right, large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history by listening to this very podcast. Whether you like it or not, and I know you like it, you're part of what we call the biker revolution. Hashtag biker revolution. I am alone in the studio today, so I have one question for you. What are you waiting for? Bikeaholics, mount up. Let me take you on another wild ass ride that's right ryan erlacher here your host of the law-abiding biker podcast and your high-tech redneck there you go i know you're waiting for somebody else to say it um but uh, they are not here so uh anyways uh got a great episode here for you uh i just want to announce a couple things before we dive in that is don't forget sturgis ride and meetup event thursday august 13th uh, 2020 outside the Sturgis area. You can plan for 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on your schedule. Uh, requirements, you must be a mid-level patron or above by. you got to be a contrib- contributing mid-level patron or above three months prior, which would be May 13th, 2020. The deadline to sign up for the event is June 1st, 2020 at midnight Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I guess it would be, uh, yeah, Pacific Standard Time. And uh, there is an official form. If you're in the Facebook group, of course, we did a event in there. That is not how you sign up, and we don't even look at that. That was just to let you know it was there. In fact, on that particular uh, private Facebook group event, there's a link to the actual official sign-up form. It's at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash 2020 meetup. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash 2020 meetup. That is the official form that you need to sign up, and uh, we will get it, uh, we'll, and then we'll be notified on that, guys, make sure that uh, you'd look for two emails. Please look for two emails. After you submit the form, the first email will be, hey, thanks for signing up and some information like that. And then the second email, check your junk spam folder because they seem to be going there. If you don't see it, it is to ask you to opt in to the official email list for uh, the 2020 meetup. You have to be on that email list. That is how you're going to get all the nitty gritty details. If you're not on that email list, you're going to be wondering why you haven't heard anything. So please, two emails, confirmation email, and then the email sign up, uh, opt in for the email list, guys. And we're looking forward to that as we continue to move towards Sturgis. Main topic today, guys. So let me start by saying I did a YouTube video. It's been out for a while. It's got a ton of views, and it is on the F4 Customs windshields. Uh, and they're an aftermarket windshield. They're an amazing product, and I'm not just saying that. We vet a lot of things here at Law Bending Biker Media. We get a lot of stuff thrown at us. Of course, uh, we're big enough where a lot of companies reach out to us, but a lot of times you never even hear about it because we just don't believe 
in the product. We get stuff. We're constantly testing stuff. I don't even show some of the stuff I've actually tested that never made it in front of our audience because I care. We care that we try to, you know, bring you awesome quality at a good price and somewhere in between. And I'm just so careful about what we, you know, uh, uh, recommend or put in front of you. Well, the F4 Customs windshield is an amazing windshield. I did the YouTube video on it. You really need to watch that video because we're, um, because in the interview I'm going to do here with Don Frank, uh, owner of F4 Customs Windshield, we uh, probably will talk about the video a little bit. Um, so it's on YouTube where I tested this windshield. I'm running a 10-inch light tint F4 Customs Windshield on my 14 Street Glide Special. And I put it through this uh, whole array of tests. And there's a lot of product shots and stuff like that. But I was rubbing steel wool on it thing doesn't swirl. You can literally rub steel wool on it. They've got a proprietary baked in process. And uh, it's amazing that you can do that without swirling. You can clean it with regular uh, Windex um, and paper towels. It doesn't scratch. It doesn't swirl. I even hit it with a hammer on the asphalt like over and over and the thing won't break. And I run it over. I got, I actually run it over with my wife's Honda Pilot in the video trying to break it. So make sure you go check that video out. Um, it was a, it was a, a fun video to make. It was a lot of work, but I really did put this thing through the test. And I talked about uh, in the video, the optical clarity and the difference between it and some of the really weird shaped, funky, you know, wind splitter type, you know, windshields and, and the pros and cons of both. Um, you know, everybody's got the windshield, you know, that they like and they have certain needs. So I'm certainly not talking bad about other windshields, but this windshield for the price brings you a whole bunch of uh, awesome um, capabilities. And I really liked how it, uh, I talk about in the video about how it popped the air up over me and stuff like that. Anyways, check the video out and, uh, um, and I'm just going to uh, get right into the interview here with Don Frank, uh, owner and founder of F4 Customs Windshields. And I'll put a link to that YouTube video in the show notes. You know, I know we talked on the phone and stuff before. What's uh, where'd you give give me a little history on on Don Frank and where you know, kind of how you uh, where you live and where you grew up and stuff like that, and maybe some of your motorcycling background. I'm interested in. Oh sure. Uh, so, uh, always lived in Ohio, Northeastern Ohio. And, uh, she started riding mini bikes and dirt bikes as a, as a kid. And then as, uh, time allowed 16, 17 years old, started into riding motorcycles on the road and, uh, you know, did that, you know, for the rest of my life, uh, pretty much rode gold wings and Harleys. Um, that was basically uh, the motorcycles that I rode. And, uh, you know, lifetime, what I did is I'm a uh, tool and die an engineer. And so, you know, I've done a lot of development of different parts along the way. I just never did it as part of a business that I owned. Yeah. So what's what you remember your first street bike? My first street bike was a uh, 754 Honda uh, with a wind jammer fairing. Nice. I, is it, you don't have that bike anymore? No, no. You know, as all of us do, we all wish we had, you know, our first or second or third motorcycle and we don't usually hang on to them. So no, but that was, that was my first. And it was, uh, it was a beast. It did the job, you know, it was it, back then, you know, we're talking 1974, 75, you know, that was a sizable motorcycle, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah, well, I guess I started off with a Honda 350 actually was the first one. And that's when I was about 17, 18 years old. So it's been a lot of years ago. Yeah. Did you, uh, did, I know you grew up with dirt bikes kind of like me. I did too. Uh, were your, uh, was that introduced to you by like your folks or, or is that something you just got into on your own? Cause my folks weren't really, uh, didn't have motorcycles or anything like that it was kind of my deal. Yeah. My parents didn't either. They, uh, they, in fact, they were totally opposed. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> so, but a couple of my buddies had, uh, dirt bikes. And so I just started riding with them and, uh, ended up buying one of my own. And, uh, uh, that was back when I think it was the Honda, Honda Enduro at that time. And 
or the Suzuki. We rode those and, uh, yeah. And we had one friend had a, uh, stripper cut that his dad made a motocross track and we used to go down there and ride. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That does sound fun. There's a, that's interesting is my parents too, was, uh, they were opposed to your first street bike. Uh, sounds like you were mm-hmm. seven, a teenager. They were opposed to that. <laughs> Oh, they sure were. They said, you know, as long as you live in this house, there will be a motorcycle in this house. And so it only took about a month once I turned 18 and was out of the house to have one. So, you yeah. know, road bike. What do you, uh, now I know, cause I've talked to you, you know, uh, briefly in the past, what you, you do some, uh, touring riding like us, you kind of ride around and, uh, what do you, what are you riding right now? Well, I've got a, uh, 2011, uh, ultra classic. And uh, I ride it, but I've also got a uh, Spider uh, F3 Limited that I ride, and I've got a Honda Goldwing uh, to or the GL 1800 that I ride occasionally. But it all depends on the trip, and I kind of decide what what I want to take, uh, whether the wife goes along or whether she rides her own, which she does. Yeah, so it's kind of a family affair. It sounds like uh, on these trips, do you go with a larger group, or is it mostly just family? Uh, it's usually just family. Uh, my son, David still rides quite a bit. My son, Dan, just a little. And, uh, but no, it's, uh, usually just Kim and I, and we're, you know, we take off and, uh, we usually meet people, you know, doing what we've done, uh, in business, we meet a lot of people and all across the United States. So we try to, you know, catch up with some of them when we're out doing our, uh, you know, we'll take a week and maybe run the Tennessee mountains or take two weeks and roll out West. You know, we try to catch up with some of these folks. Yeah, I love that. That's been the best part about doing this law abiding biker media. Just uh, wherever we go, um, regardless, I'm always meeting just the most awesome, you know, people from the motorcycle community. And just I love hearing stories and figuring, you know, finding where people are from and all that kind of stuff. That's definitely I think uh, uh, everybody kind of that rides cross country. That's probably one of their, uh, you know, favorite parts. You can just walk up to a stranger and start talking, you know. You know, the motorcycle industry, you never meet a stranger as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, that's something that when you ride a motorcycle, you you it's different because it's you're doing something you love. It's a passion. And that that's for just about every motorcycle rider out there. And that's why when we go to a lot of the rallies and so forth, people are excited. They're having fun. You know, they're really enjoying themselves because their their motorcycle is an avenue into this type of enjoyment and meeting a lot of people and boy, what great people we've, we've really met a lot of super people. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I agree. Uh, so let's take it rewind. Uh, you so see, you, you get your bike, you, you, you get out of high school, I take it. So where does, where does Don go from here? Cause uh, we'll lead up, you know, obviously you own the business now, but uh, what, what's your background there? Did you go to college or? No, I never went to college. I was, uh, I went to work for a tool and die shop and, uh, was, uh, uh, tool and die maker and uh, was there actually for about 27 years and actually owned part of it and then uh, I left there sold my interest and I went on to be president and CEO of a large company in, in uh, Cleveland and uh, in the automotive stamping business and then I did some consulting work and uh, during the time that I was doing the consulting work and the being the CEO I ran across uh, you know this idea and and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. What's uh, auto stamping, you said? What is that? Yeah, auto stamping. We made a lot of parts for uh, companies, uh, the automotive companies, you know, General Motors, Ford, uh, Honda, Mercedes, all those people. So uh, we would make the uh, a lot of the, the parts. We would powder coat paint them. Uh, you know, we had 40 parts on the one of the big Mercedes uh, cars at one time. So there was just, uh, you know, a lot of activity there. It was a great learning experience over the years. Phenomenal learning experience. Met a lot of uh, really interesting people and, and learned a lot about not only business, but, uh, you know, different engineering, different steels, different aspects, plastics, all that stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. That's definitely, I was going to say, you know, starting your own business, that was, a you know, to be a CEO of a company like that and kind of see behind the scenes, I bet that was uh, definitely you picked up some, uh, uh, tips and tricks and understanding before you rolled out your own business, huh? Yeah, we really did. Uh, you know, the neat thing about it is, um, you know, I always treated the companies that I worked for as if they were my own. And so 
it was uh, an easy rollout for me to do this. And, you know, I just got to the point where I didn't want the corporate world anymore. I wanted to do something more uh, uh, enjoyable, something that I, that I had a passion for. And I wanted it to be in the, in the motorcycle industry. So, yeah. So how did you uh, spawn this idea of the F4 customs windshields? Kind of take me through that on how you decided you were going to do this and where the idea came from. Well, okay. So um, first let me tell you that F4 customs came from my last name is Frank and four members of my family. So uh, we sat around the table one day as a family and said, uh, what should we call the business? And that's what uh, the boys actually came up with. And we wanted to be customs because, you know, we wanted to do not only windshields, but other things. And uh, so, but what happened was I was uh, riding a lot with different windshields. I uh, didn't like the, the air dynamics that I was getting in a lot of cases. I didn't like the fact that I would buy a new windshield and within three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, no matter what I did or how careful I was, I had scratches. And that used to always irritate me so bad. So I met up with some folks that had done some work in the uh, uh, racing industry. And uh, we got together and I developed a, uh, or I should say we developed a uh, a different way to uh, coat a windshield or to process a windshield in order to be able to make the service extremely hard. And so that's how it kind of spawned. It was about 15 years ago and, and we just, uh, you know, we kept working on it, working on it, working on it. And we finally found, a you know, a, a product that we could, uh, put proprietary rights on and go to, go to market with it. So what's that process like Don to go, you know, just briefly, like, you know, when you're developing a product like that, I mean, you, you obviously have to have a facility that's going to test this and manufacture it. I mean, what's, I, I, I don't understand what that's like. Okay. So, you know, first you have to start off with a substrate material or by that, I mean the base material. Now you can choose really, there's only two choices. You can go with acrylic or you can go with polycarbonate. So first you have to pick the, the material you want to make it out of. And then you have to, really work hard on on the development of not only the coating you're going to bake into it, but the process to do so. And the process is as proprietary as what the coating itself is. And so it just took, it takes a lot of time. You know, it takes, it took several years to really get it to the point where even after we started our company, we were always making changes. And uh, so it was about three years in, that we really honed it down well so that we had great adhesion and, uh, you know, great rain shedding and optical clarity. Uh, we just kept tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until we finally had the recipe that really did the job. And uh, there's, you know, I can only talk about it so much because there's, it is proprietary, but it's about a 12 step process to make a windshield like this. Wow. And you say, um, I mean, obviously, you know, just uh, owning a company myself, there must, uh, you know, and obviously I'm not looking for numbers. I'm just, you had uh, probably a good financial investment over the years trying to figure this out. Mm-hmm. It really was. Yeah. It really was. It, uh, it was quite costly. And, uh, you know, and we're the type of company that if you have a problem, you know, we stand behind it. And there, in early on, there was some issues. Uh, but those are all gone. That was in the first year or two of business. And, and, uh, we don't have anybody out there that's, that's, that, that I know of that hasn't been treated fairly and really enjoyed, uh, what we've developed. That's for sure. And so these windshields now that you've got this, you know, dialed in here and how many years has it been now since it's been going on 14 years. Okay. And so you've obviously got this pretty dialed in, um, uh, is there a facility, you know, like in Ohio or is the, the, you know, manufacturer somewhere else? They're made in the USA. We know that. Correct. Correct. Everything's made in the United States. And we actually have three different manufacturing facilities that make these for us to our proprietary rights. And uh, so, you know, we work very, very closely with them. We do all of the design and development of the shield itself. Um, and then we take that shape and uh, different sizes and all that stuff. 
to uh, our suppliers and then they manufactured them for us. And Don, you were saying, um, you, you say we started a company. Did you do this yourself or did you have somebody else with you? No, Cause I, you say we, yeah. Um, that's just a term I always use. I don't like the term I, mm. um, but my, uh, uh, my son, David, uh, started with me and, uh, worked with me for several years and he was really instrumental in helping to get the company going. All right. So this is, a. Uh, uh, before I dive in a little bit deeper to the windshields themselves, but this is a, a family venture. I mean, wh- what are we talking about, you know, as far as um, size and employees and, and uh, you run, I know you run lean like me. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Cause I know your family's involved. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, we have the family runs the day to day operations and the sales marketing and advertising. Uh, then we have staff that do the, uh, uh, distribution, uh, warehouse work. Uh, they, there's a lot of windshields that we sell that take, um, a lot of different packaging because we're not only selling glass in some cases, we're selling some hardware. Uh, so they, it all has to be put together. And so everything is brought in. Uh, we manufacture some of it ourselves, but it's all brought in and, uh, assembled, packaged, and then shipped out to, uh, the uh, customer. In a lot of cases, uh, we drop ship for our dealers. Um, and uh, so they send us an order and then we uh, turn around and send that out to the customer for them. Okay. And let's dive in, Don, to, I know a little bit about this, um, with the video I put out, but um, tell me the difference between the polycarbonate and acrylic because um, you guys are doing the polycarbonate and you say other windshields are like acrylic. So give, give me an idea of some of the acrylic. I don't want to give, you know, necessarily other companies, but Harley would be one right. of them. Like they're, what do they call it? The wind splitter. Is that acrylic? Mm-hmm. No, it's it, the wind splitter. If it's a Harley Davidson windshield, it is made out of polycarbonate, but you have to keep this in mind. All of the OEMs, I don't care which one you talk about. They make their windshields out of polycarbonate. That's their base material. And the reason they do that is because they don't want them breaking or shattering upon impact. Now, a lot of different aftermarket companies use acrylic, and it's cheaper, and uh, they call it high-impact acrylic. But I, it doesn't matter. Acrylic, if it is um, hit with a hammer, uh, hit with a retread or a rock, it can break. And if it does, those edges are extremely sharp. So we had, in the very, very beginning, we had to make the decision of whether or not we wanted to go down the road of acrylic, which would be cheaper, or did we want to go with polycarbonate? And we made the determination early on that we were going to go with the highest grade optics polycarbonate we could buy. Now, a lot of people know polycarbonate as the name Lexan. And Lexan's GE's brand of polycarbonate. So... But we buy uh, different uh, polycarbonate from different suppliers, and it always has to be the highest grade because we don't want the imperfections in the material whatsoever, in the base material. And then we bring that material in, and it's all masked. It's got plastic on it. It's it's really protected all the way through our process um, with clean rooms and, and just so much uh, – uh, time and effort spent towards cleanliness. But polycarbonate is much stronger. Polycarbonate is is much safer uh, than anything made out of acrylic. And so we just elected, you know, 14, 15 years ago, we're not going to make an acrylic windshield. We'll only go with polycarbonate. And you mentioned optical clarity was a concern of yours as you were getting going here, uh, you know, on mm-hmm. this. Um, tell me a little bit about that and, you know, optical clarity is that something that has to do with polycarbonate and acrylic or is that just your baked in process well the first of all you know acrylic is can be very optic optically correct also uh but um take any oem windshield it's polycarbonate and the way they do it is they coat uh they make the windshield and then they coat the windshield well you can imagine when you coat uh, or run coating over top of a, of a windshield um, that you're going to get what they call runoff around the edges or whatever, and you get some distortion. Um, 
we do it just the opposite. We don't, we code our windshields after they're completed and it's called post coding. And the, and then we trim them all off after that. And so that way you get only the pristine part of the, of the shield itself. And that's why we get no distortion. You know, even in our recurve, Ryan, we don't get distortion. And that took us three years to make a recurve windshield. Uh, and by recurve, I mean it's facing forward or rolls forward to take the air up over you. It took us three years to make that without any distortion in it, but we did it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely, that was one of the things I noted in the video on that. Um, so when you're talking about uh, these windshields now, um, for the audience, you guys are making, and we talked a little bit about the recurve. That's kind of, you know, what we have in the law abiding biker store and all that. And you aren't, you never really got into the, you know, we're talking about the, you know, Harley. I'm just using it because it's Harley and we mm -hmm. can talk about them, but the wind splitter and all the crazy, you know, curvatures and they kind of come back into the rider area and stuff. Is that something you guys yeah. dabbled in? It's not. Um, and I talked a little bit about that too, in my video about how I've ran those before. And, you know, when you do look down, you see the lines are all distorted and, you know, lower speed, you know, if you're looking at potholes, you can't really tell where they are. Um, is there a reason you guys didn't dabble in that or what's your thoughts? Sure. Sure. Um, well, when you do what we do and you go out to different shows, um, you find people writing the different styles, I'll call them style windshield. And so we had many of case, many cases where we actually removed one of those windshields and put ours on. And so you ask the question, why? Um, most people that run those, it's an appearance thing. They, they like the appearance of them. Um, the ones that are like the wind splitter, they're okay for the rider uh, as far as wind protection. But the co-rider gets a lot more air because it actually splits the wind goes around the rider and then hits the co-rider. So we tested those because we had some that we took off when we took them back to the factory and we tested them. We just didn't like the performance. Um, the other thing is if you ever have a windshield like that um, or a windshield with a lot of curvature in it or, or that sort of thing, and you roll into the twisties, you know, there's times when you roll into the twisties and you're seeing the lines uh, and the potholes at the side of the road and stuff like that you want to know exactly where they're at well it gets a little gooey and that's the easiest way i can say it, it gets a little gooey and uh so you know what we've just stuck with clarity we want the best optics available whether you look over or look through we want the best optics available for the rider now let's talk a little bit more don about the baked in process um because in my video I rub steel wool on my windshield and uh, which was pretty, pretty cool uh, to, to be able to do. <laughs> it was. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that and why, you know, cause one of your pain points, why you developed these was scratching of windshields. And I know, um, and you do, and everybody that's listening um, out there knows that all the other windshields are, they swirl really bad. Even my stock Harley, one of my police bike, you know, they swirl and uh, they tell you not to use, glass cleaners and Windex and you got to use all these special stuff and then they still swirl. So let's talk about that a little bit. I was pretty impressed with that. Hey, Bigolics. Are you searching for the easiest and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. This father-son team designed something really special. You can't find it anywhere else. Yep, these guys ride so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack Quick Attach System is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, Rank Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, bikeholics? Head over to the Law Abiding Biker store and check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. Hey, Bikeaholics, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products? Zero 3D has a products you dream about for your bike. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley-Davidson and Honda Goldwing motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome and black parts, lighting, 
and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing, more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team of riders with over 40 years experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them. Email sales at zero 3D.com. Give them a call, 715-808-0027. Check at your local Harley or Honda dealership and ask for Ciro or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged. Better believe it. So check out Ciro 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for the all-new Honda Gold Wings. Better yet, help support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Ciro 3D products. Oh, yeah. Well, so I ran into the same thing that all your listeners do. You know, you no matter how careful you are, you're going to put those micro scratches in. And as soon as you head into the sun, man, that's all you see. And even if you're looking over top, the windshield looks like crap. And if you do want to look down through and the sun's hitting you, you can't see very well. And especially after it gets two or three years old. So that was happening a lot. And like I said before, it, no matter how careful I was, within two, three, four months, I had those scratches. So I just, you know, we needed to come up with something that was different. So we knew that the OEMs use a material called MR10, uh, and it's it, that's a polycarbonate, and it's a material that is uh, formable hard coat, and they can call it hard coat. But it's it's still not hard. Um, you can take any any OEM windshield out there, or really any competitor's windshield, and you can take steel wool and rub it, and you've got scratches right away. And so, you know, we wanted something better, and uh, so we went to work. And I mean, I had you know all kinds of people involved from an engineering chemistry you know situation to get involved with this, but we really needed something that when we baked it in. It was hard, but yet not too hard so that it would be brittle. And so there's a real fine line. And that's what I said. It took, took a long time to develop all this. But the, the key to it is when we were done, we could take steel wool to it. Uh, we could clean it with anything we wanted to clean it with. And Ryan, I got to tell you, when I first started this, you know, I was even a doubting Thomas. So what I did you know what brake fluid does to, to plastic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I took brake fluid. I dumped it on the windshield. I turned it so that, you know, it was curved up. Dumped it on the windshield. I was at a rally. And I dumped it on the windshield and put it behind the trailer. And I forgot. Mm-hmm. And two days later, the rally's coming to an end. I walk around back. I thought, oh, no, there's that windshield. It's going to be toast. Well, guess what? I poured the brake fluid off of it, and it was just as pristine as when I put it on. Wow. And so then we knew. We knew we had a winner. And, uh, you know, the one thing about this, the surface can't absorb anything. It's sealed, completely sealed. So that's why the chemicals aren't going to attack it. They can't hurt it. Um, So even if you you get behind cars and trucks and stuff like that and you get – bad stuff that causes your windshield to delaminate over time and things like that. We don't care. Um, you know, clean it off and go, it's going to be just fine. And you actually, so these windshields, uh, you suggest just regular, uh, you guys have a cleaner, but then you also just say regular glass cleaners fine too, right? Any glass cleaner you want to use is fine. We tell you to stay away from waxes. You know, people often get a hold of us and they say, you know, can I wax it? Can I put lemon pledge on it? Can I use Honda spray wax is one I get asked about all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I tell people, no, no, don't use it. They say, well, why is it going to harm it? No, it's not. What's going to happen is it's net, when you put the wax on it, it's going to shed rain like the wax. It's not going to shed rain like the built-in rain shedder that's inside. Okay? So then the other thing is you've got your – uh, not only your rain shedding, but like a Honda spray wax or a lemon pledge or something like that, you're going to wipe and wipe and clean and clean. And it's going to be so smeary that because it didn't absorb it, 
And then you're going to call me and you're going to say, Don, Don, I, I can't get the windshield clean. It's, you know, it's, it's really smeary. And you know what I'm going to tell you? Go get rubbing alcohol or, uh, a, you know, strong chemical, but rubbing alcohol is great or vinegar. Put it on a paper towel, wash it down good and leave it alone. Cause that's, it's, it's all baked in. You don't need to do anything with it. Yeah. Interesting. Those are some pretty waxy cleaners. Yeah. Pledge and Honda. Um, and, uh, I have used on mine just because that's what I use on a daily basis. I, tr- I've used Windex too. Um, but bug slide, which we sell in our store, but it's not really mm-hmm. a heavy waxy, you know, and I don't, sometimes it's all I have. And so I just cleaned it real quick. It didn't seem to have any issues, any thoughts on oh, that. No. Yeah. Ryan bug slide is great. Not okay. Problem at all. It's good stuff. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. No problem with that at all. Okay, good. Because I got a couple of questions and I go, well, it's not really a waxy type cleaner. And we sell the heck out of that stuff in the store. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, mm-hmm. it seems to do just as well. So good, good. I'm glad uh, glad we uh, got that question answered because I've been asked it a few times. Um, so let's talk about um, the, so you've been in the market. Um, you guys have been successful uh, in the different markets like Honda and, you know, the, uh, the three wheel, you know, type vehicles and mm-hmm. some of the, some of the other manufacturers, but you've been making the hardy ones. Um, and we've talked and that's kind of how we hooked up is you're trying to um, break in into the hardy market. And it's funny because you can actually, you know, as well as I do being a businessman that you can have the absolute best product in the world. If you can't get it in front of people, then it's not, then nobody knows about it. And so I was uh, surprised that I hadn't heard of, you know, of you before and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we can get you into the market and, uh, uh, into the Harley and all that kind of stuff. Cause it is a great windshield. Yeah, I certainly hope so. You know, we've tried, uh, you know, by going to the different dealerships, but you know, um, they are supposed to sell the Harley brand. And so they aren't real, you know, they'll, they'll make an initial purchase, but then, and they love them, but then they don't, they're not supposed to take the shelf space with something that isn't Harley Davidson. So, but you know, all in all, you know, it, it, the Harley Davidson market is a great market. We make windshields for just about every Harley model. Um, and, uh, you know, we just want to get the word out so that, folks realize that there's an alternative out there to buy another OEM windshield. Right. And what's, what's your biggest market, Don? I mean, you're big in the Goldwing, right? Mm-hmm. We're very big in Goldwing. We're very big in Slingshot, very big in Spider, uh, uh, you know, the Can-Am. Um, you know, uh, those are probably the three largest. We now do the Vanderhall uh, windshields also. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's – uh, it's spread, spread quite a bit. Um, and, you know, the odd part about it is, is just that when we started out, Ryan, we knew Honda Goldwing because that's at the time what I was riding. So we knew that. And we got involved with uh, an association called the GWRA, which is the Goldwing Road Riders Association. And they were fantastic to us. And uh, so we were able to make our name there. And then from there, we started branching out to all the different models, make some models. And uh, so now our big push is to try to get some traction with the Harley riders. So, you know, because I ride a Harley too, and I just want folks to, to know about it. And it's so odd because I can ride 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes from my house and people have no idea who I am and, or what we produce. And so, you know, shame on us. we got to get the word out and uh, you know, let people know what this product's about. Yeah, definitely. And I'm excited. We're carrying them in the law abiding biker store and we just pushed out the, the video, uh, I did. So, um, tell me, uh, I guess me, I know the audience, what, you know, what are we, uh, uh, our options here, you know, as far as sizes and I know it varies from bike to bike and, you know, light tint versus dark tint and, and all that kind of stuff. I'll do that, Ryan. But first of all, let me also tell the audience that your video was awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, an unbelievable uh, video, high quality, uh, good content. And, and that's just not because it was all of our product. But, you know, uh, I thought you gave it a really, you know, good, good uh, testing and a good review. Awesome, uh, thanks. As far as, as, far as the uh, different ones, you know, the Road Kings, um, you know, we don't sell any hardware for the Harley Davidson. So, so, you know, we just do the replacement shield and they all bolt right up. 
So we do the Road King 15 inch to uh, 21 inch, and we do that in clear and light tint. We do the Soft Tail, Soft Tail Springer. Um, we do the Soft Tail Deluxe. Uh, geez, just all the frame mounted ones, you know, Sportsters, Dianas, do them all uh, in all various heights so that you have a choice. And you know what, Ryan? If they, if let's just say a guy says, you know what, a 19. Is just a little bit too short for me, but a 21 is too tall. Well, give you guys a call, law abiding, or call us, and guess what? We'll make it the height you need. It's not a problem at all. And we measure them from the headlight opening to the top. So, you know, we aim to please. If, you, if there's a height you, you want that we don't offer, you just have to tell us. Now, we also make the FLHT, and as we all know, uh, the FLHT or Ultra or, you know, whatever you want to. Batwing fairing. Yeah, Yeah, batwing fairing. You know, those changed in 2013, or 14 actually. Uh, So we make not only uh, those from 96 to 13, and then we make them from 2014 to now, but we also make some of the old five bolt, uh, you know, pre 96 year. Uh, We still have those in stock too. Now, those aren't recurved, they're straight shields. Um, and we still get some folks that want the straight shield and, you know, we try to accommodate when they want them. Um, so we do that. And then the, the, the big hit that we've got now is, uh, the road glide, the 2014 road glide recurve. I'll tell you, we make it out in a 15 and an 18. And for the guy doing touring, the 18 is awesome. And, uh, for the guy that just wants, you know, the general riding and so forth, uh, maybe a little shorter rider, they really like that 15 inch recurve. Yeah. Now on the uh, bat wing fairing, it's like four inches mm-hmm. to fifteen inches is what is what my memory serves me here, and uh, you can get light mm-hmm. tint, uh, dark tint up too. But you, we don't do the fifteens in dark tint because obviously that's a windshield you wouldn't be looking over; you would be looking through. Am I correct? Yeah, and we do uh, four inch to uh, ten inch in clear light tint and dark tint. And then anything above, uh, we don't do dark tint in 10, 15, or 10, 12, and 15. And the reason we don't is just what you said. It's just too dark. It's, we don't feel it's, it's, it's a good fit uh, to look through. And, uh, so, and then we also, by the way, make windshields for Indians, too, for the uh, vintage and the uh, Roadmaster. And uh, so, you know, in the Chieftain, we have uh, windshields available for them, too. Yeah, and that's funny because and you guys have them on law abiding. We do, we do. We got them all listed now, so that's exciting. And in fact, in the video, the one I'm hammering and running over with yeah. the car to try to break, that's actually the Indian one because it was an extra one I had <laughs> and I needed it for the video. So it's still uh, actually it's sitting out here on the shelf. So that was pretty impressive. Well, honestly, when I was making that video, and the audience will all see the video, I'm sure they'll go to the YouTube channel and check it out. But um, when I hammered it so hard uh, for so many times, and then uh, I was actually uh, surprised because I was thinking it's got to be, you know, at least like dimples or something and i just took my leather glove and i you can hear the static on it just kind of wiped off so that was i was highly impressed with that so yeah you know when we're at a show people will say oh come on you can break it and i take a a small four inch sample and i put a crescent wrench on both sides and i bend it clear over on itself then i put it on the ground and i beat it and they are just astounded that that piece of material didn't break but, you know, Ryan, I'm telling you, um, it, the one thing about it is when you're riding behind that windshield, I've had horror stories told me about how pieces of plywood have come out of pickup trucks and hit the motorcycle, hit the windshield or whatever. I've got testimonials from people that rode behind our windshields, and thank God they didn't break. Um, you know, it's a safety issue. It's, you know, strictly safety. And that's why the OEMs use polycarbonate as their base material. Right. And yeah, safety, obviously, definitely uh, interested in that. And then like, like I say, the whole, the overall uh, ease of cleaning it and not having to worry about scratches and swirl marks. And I often just have Windex laying around in the shot. It's just so nice not to have to worry about it so much and how I'm cleaning it. Time is money and I'm just, I just ride a lot and I don't have time to be, you know, 
detail in every little nook and cranny of my bike. I just need, I want to get the dang bugs off and, and go on another ride, you know? So um, hold into the gas station, spray it down with any glass clear you want. Take those wood grain paper towels, rub it as hard as you like and go because the windshield is going to be just fine. Yeah. It's badass. I love that. I love that. It makes it easy. And that's, that's what I, that's what I look for products that are totally functional and useful like that. So these things, um, not that they really need it, because you see in my video, I tried to destroy it and I couldn't, but they do, you do uh, hold a warranty on them or offer a warranty on them. Sure. And it's one, it's the, I think it's the, the longest warranty of anybody in the market. We do a four year, we do a, the first two, and let me tell you what we warranty first, any cracks, crazing, delamination, anything like that. Um, uh, any factory, you know, thing we did wrong. Uh, first two years, hundred percent. You call me, you tell me, Hey Don, I got a problem. Here's what it is. And let me just tell you that we tell everybody like law abiding biker, you know, tell your customers to call us if they have a problem, we'll deal with them direct. We don't care. We want the customer satisfied. And so first two years, unconditionally, no problem. The next two years is prorated. So, you know, and we don't have warranty issues. We really don't. I don't warranty scratches. I can't because somebody could after, you know, two, three years, whatever, uh, take a knife to it or whatever and say, oh, scratch my windshield and send me a new one. And so we can't do that. But I'm telling you, they don't have to worry about that part. Yeah, that's great. Um, so uh, what uh, I'm curious about this because I've been asked, uh, it would be awesome if you and a couple guys said this, and I agree, because you talk about the the getting swirl marks and and uh, you know when you're going into the sun or at night, I'm thinking of my helmet shield, and I hate that. Can you make a helmet shield, Don? That's what we need too. <laughs> Have you thought about well, that? With that, uh, I don't know if that's just a can of worms, but I thought I'd mention it. Well, yeah, it is kind of a can of worms. You know, we could uh, make them, but most of those are molded. Uh, with a injection molding process. Um, we have tried to coat them after the injection molding process to see if we could just take one and redo it. Oh, so you have dabbled is, in it. Okay. Yeah. So the, usually the base material for those is really bad. And so, yeah, we can't even coat them. We can't post coat them. So, um, and so no, it, it's just one of those things to just, it isn't doesn't fit for us but uh you know we do do th other things and uh you know we do some air wings and some wind blockers and some stuff like that and and uh you know we do some different things like that but you know we're just an air management company and you know uh you know a lot of time and effort goes into when we first come out with a windshield sometimes it takes us longer than everybody else but it's just because we won't put it to market until we're satisfied that it's going to give you the best wind protection for you and the co-writer. Yeah, I love it. Now you guys are rolling around to different uh, rallies and stuff, right? What do you mm -hmm. What do you guys? What's the usual? Because that's a that's a time commitment. I know the rally running those. Rally, we have a lot of other companies that uh, we sell stuff for, and I know that's grueling. What What's your schedule look like on that, or where people can, you know, maybe hook up oh. with you? Uh, yeah. So we used to do twenty seven shows a year. Uh, so that meant you're on the road for thirty four weeks. Uh, wow. So we started the company. Now we do three, um, and the company has continued to grow exponentially every year, and we do it more by word of mouth than anything else and repeat customers. But uh, And that's the one thing we don't get a whole lot of unless they buy a new bike because uh, our windshields don't wear out. But uh, we're going to be at uh, Daytona Bike Week uh, in the spring. Uh, we go to Americade in Lake George, New York. And we do uh, Wingding, which is the National Goldwing Rally. Um, and those are the three that we really uh, have focused in on. Occasionally, we do Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, uh, or we'll do uh, Panama City Beach. But uh, haven't decided what's going to be on, on for 2020 yet. And obviously, at the rallies, you uh, uh, have a you take a bunch of stock to sell, or you, you mount them and stuff, or what's the deal there? If somebody were to visit your booth, what can they expect? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So they come in. Uh, we take a look. Uh, we usually tell them, you know, bring your bike over. Let's see what size is really right for you. Uh, and then we mount it for them. Uh, then at that point, they can go out and ride and come back and say, ah, you know, that's perfect. Or, geez, Don, I, you know, can I try this height? And we'll just walk them out and they can try them. So, yeah. uh, no big deal. 
Very, very cool. What else did I not ask that you want to tell about your shields or that I glazed over? But, yeah. Um, you know, we, we talked about so much of it, but I think, you know, the, the, the key factors here are the optics, the ease of cleaning, the rain shedding, um, and the air management. I mean, the, it's, it's all balanced around that. And I tell people all the time, you know, you can go out and buy an inexpensive shield, no doubt. In two years, you're going to do it again. Um, with our windshield, we're, we like to say that we produce a product that will give back to you every time you ride. And so, and we treat our customers the way we want to be treated. So, you know, you've got a product that is just, you know, head and shoulders above, um, anything else that's on the market. And so if you want the best, uh, material, uh, you know, and the one that's going to last, it's us, it's F4 customs. And, you know, and we are so happy that, that law biting biker is, is handling our, our, our product. We are just thrilled that you guys are involved. Yeah. And vice versa being involved with you guys. And, um, I'm really looking forward to now that people are going to be aware of, like I said, I just simply wasn't aware of it. And, um, so pleased with the testing and that's what I'm rocking on my, uh, 14 street light special is the eight inch, uh, light tint. And that's going to stay on there, um, for a long, long time. I really liked how it performed. Uh, and I like that recurve and, uh, you know, it popped that wind right up over my head. Um, uh, and, and so, yeah, just in, in the optical clarity and all that kind of stuff. And just like you say, uh, or like we talked about it, just to be able to go in and not have to worry about exactly how I clean it and just, uh, get the stuff off, get the grid off and, and move on. So yeah, just, uh, awesome, awesome product. And, uh, I think we look forward to uh, uh, moving forward and, and uh, seeing these on more bikes, basically. Well, I appreciate that, Ryan. I really do. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I really do. And uh, all your listeners. And, uh, you know, if you uh, if you have any doubt, just go online at Law Abiding. Check them out. Read some of the reviews. Uh, talk to some folks that have had them. Uh, they sell themselves that way. Yeah. Great. And if you're ever, uh, Don, of course, we'll be in contact, but if you're ever over this way riding or something, um, make sure you let us know and we'll hook up and go on a ride or vice versa. If we eventually make it over there, we'll have to hook up. We'll make a point. We'll make a point to head your way this year. You can count on it. Yeah, that'd be sweet. We'll actually get you in the studio and we'll just sit down on some mics and talk about something else. Who knows? Oh yeah. yeah. Sounds great. Sweet. All right. Well, Don, thanks a million. Uh, uh, appreciate your time. Brian, you're awesome. Take care. Appreciate everything. Yeah, you too. Bye now. Bye. Oh, yeah. I really hope you enjoyed that interview with Don Frank. I had a good time. Learned a lot. Hope you did too. And like I say in that interview, and uh, don't forget to watch that YouTube video I made. It is an amazing product, and uh, I'm just very pleased that we're carrying it right in the Law Abiding Biker store. So please, if you're interested in it, uh, buy it from our store, guys. Uh, it helps support us and our mission to uh, help as many bikers as we can worldwide and continue this thing we call the Biker Revolution. And as you heard right in the very interview, Bug Slide, it's just fine to use on it. I've used it quite a few times, and uh, no issues there Um, because it's not that really thick, waxy type of cleaner, which is why I really like it. So don't ride without the Slide Bikeaholics. Bug Slide, absolutely the best waterless motorcycle cleaner on the market. Bug Slide, tried and tested right here by the Law Abiding Biker crew and is our number one go-to waterless motorcycle cleaner. That's right, Bug Slide clean shines and degreases while removing bugs and other surface contaminants with ease. Use it on your motorcycle, car, boat, and more. Never need to wax again. That's right. The release agent in Bug Slide contains a UV filter for added protection. It's free of abrasives and is safe on all non-porous surfaces. Use it on your helmet and face shields. Yes, even safe on that darn Harley denim paint. We believe in it so much, we carry it and stock it. We sell the heck out of it right out of the law-abiding biker store facility. Big Daddy Kane and Grunt. Have it ready down there to ship direct to you right now. There you go. There you go, guys. I hope you're well. I hope you're out there getting some riding in. Right before this podcast, I was so blessed. Uh, I ran out for a couple hours 
on uh, the uh, Kawasaki KLR and uh, rode some dirt trails and some roads way up over a ridge uh, that overlooks the valley, Yakima Valley, where I live. And it was just so peaceful and it's all by myself, nobody out there. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, of course, I've been riding the police Harley every day for my Leo job. So I'm just blessed. I hope you're blessed enough to be getting in as much riding as you can. All right, guys. I am out of here. Thanks for listening, and thank you for your continued support of this platform. Couldn't do it without you. Absolutely not. 